I'm Maria Provenzano and I'm the author of the book Everyday Celebrations from Scratch and I just want to say a huge thank you to Melissa's Produce for not only providing me with such beautiful produce for today but letting me share a couple recipes with you from the book and this book my friends is my whole heart. I put so much into this and Everyday Celebrations really is just that. It's, it's making small moments and elevating them so that they are celebratory. Don't wait for a holiday to celebrate. Time is our greatest gift and so let's celebrate together. So today we're celebrating summer and I'm going to share with you a couple recipes that I've been making on repeat. So the first one is my lemony basil pesto. Pesto is a staple in my house. I feel like it just packs such a punch. Just a little bit of it goes such a long way and it's a great freezer favorite of at least mine in my house. And so I do mine in a food processor. You can do it the old fashioned way if you would like. However, this is my favorite way to do it because it's very quick and easy. Okay, so I am going to add in a couple cloves of garlic. If you like it garlicky, you can always add more. And then some freshly grated Parmesan. I actually grate mine in the food processor first and then I dump it out, measure it, and then I put it back in. So I have, like I said, my garlic in there and my Parmesan. So now I'm going to add in the pine nuts. As you can see here, I've already toasted them so they smell so lovely. You could absolutely use walnuts if you like. Uh, even pecans would be great in here. So I'm going to pop that in and now I'm going to add in my lemon. All right, so I have my microplane here. So now I am going to take the zest off of the lemon. And in the recipe, it's about one teaspoon, but you could add more if you like. I like my pesto lemony, so I always add a little bit more. So you can see that's it right there. Pop that in. And now about two to three tablespoons of the lemon juice. However, you could always add in more if you like. So I'm gonna add in the juice of about one lemon. And it's funny, when I was creating these recipes, I have made this one for legitimately years and I never, ever, ever measure it. <laughs> so when I was doing the, when I was writing out the recipe, I realized I have to have exact measurements. So I did my best to make sure I had it as close as I could. <laughs> I'm gonna add in my fresh basil. So just pop that in there. And then I just pop the top on, let it run. And then I, I pulse it a few times just to kind of break it up. And then with it running, I'm gonna add in the olive oil. And I start with about a quarter cup of olive oil. how thick you like your pesto, you could add more or less of the olive oil. If you like it to be a little bit more drizzly, you could add in a little bit more olive oil. So I like to taste it first and see if it needs any salt. Mm. Maybe just a little bit. And the reason I taste it is because a lot of times the Parmesan can be different from depending on where you get it from. I'll add a little bit of pepper. Sometimes I add pepper, sometimes I don't. It depends on the day. Usually in the fall, I like that little bit more of that pepperiness, and so I add a little bit of extra in fall. Give it another pulse. And there you go. So I'm gonna bring this over here. Take this out. And then I just pour it into a container like this, so I'll keep it in my fridge. A lot of times I can give this away to neighbors or friends as like a little gift. I'll put it in a mason jar and it is so, so delicious. In the book, I put this recipe with a lot of different things. I like to put it with um, some crostini. In the book I have a beautiful crostini in the book's optional book club because you know what? You're still invited to the book club even if you don't read the book. At least in my house. In that chapter that is the friendship chapter. So it's celebrating friendship and sometimes we just need a good excuse and standing date to get all of our friends together and a book club is great but I call it book's optional book club because sometimes you don't have time to read the book. So I always 
do a last little bit of lemon juice. I feel like that just helps it to hold its color. Now, this is beautiful as it is. If you wanted to freeze it, I would scoop this into ice cubes, an ice cube tray, and then freeze that, and then pop them out of the tray and put them in, in a bag, in a freezer safe bag, with the date on it, and then you can use the pesto whatever you like. Sometimes you just wanna do like a quick little pasta dish, saute up some shrimp, whatever it is that you like, you can add in the pesto and it will elevate it to something extraordinary. And I'm gonna grab this over. So we eat a lot of pasta in our house. I'm gonna show you how to add this into just a simple pasta dish. And this recipe for the lemony basil pesto is in the Pasta Wednesdays section of the very first chapter called Weeknight Meals. The idea behind Weeknight Meals is really I understand being a mom that it can be stressful putting dinner on the table. You sometimes feel like you're dry for ideas. But the idea behind having a sort of theme, even if you pick one day out of the week, is that you have this standing date that you look forward to. So the story behind it is that my dad actually um, grew up in a small town called Saginaw, Michigan, and his dad owned a grocery store there, and it was called Provenzano's. Now on Wednesdays, he worked half days. And so he, my dad and his brothers and sisters would all gather around, and they would have pasta. And that was what they did as a family and it was just became this tradition. Now a lot of Italians will have pasta on Sundays. They call it, some people call it Sunday sauce. However, in my dad's family, it was always Wednesday. So, we like to keep the tradition in our house. There's something so special and sacred about keeping those family traditions. And in the book, really the idea with that entire first chapter is that I encourage you to really have that standing day with your family, spend that time together, and really just slow down. Time is the greatest, greatest gift, and sometimes it's as simple as spending a Wednesday night eating pasta together and just enjoying each other's company. Some of my greatest memories of my childhood are centered around the table, whether it was my family or my extended family, because Italians, there's always a lot of people in the house, and it was just one of my favorite things and one of my greatest memories. So what I'm doing here, as you can see, I'm kind of going back and forth of mixing in the pesto and adding in the pasta. So I added in the pesto first, and so the reason I am doing it like this is because this pasta water is what's help, helping to create a sauce. And so I'm adding a little bit of pesto at a time this is the best way to season it without over seasoning or under seasoning. So what I like to do, and I think this is perfect, I add it in and then I add a little bit of pasta water. And what the pasta water does, pasta water is your friend, you guys. Pasta water will help to create a sauce and make it like creamy and luxurious. I would recommend doing, serving it in a big bowl like this. You know what you can do too? I would add in maybe some extra Parmesan if you like any extra lemon, make sure to taste as you go. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra olive oil. And that looks so beautiful. And this is a great foundation to work from. You can add grilled shrimp to this, grilled chicken, salmon, roasted salmon on the side would be so lovely and just break it up and put it on top. This pairs with so many things. Or you could make it a pasta salad, add in some mozzarella cheese, some tomatoes, drizzle it with some more olive oil, salt and pepper, and you are golden. This is so delicious. I can't wait to dig into this. But we have one more recipe to make. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And she's so pretty. And I am going to share a recipe. Look at how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness. I See, one of my tips in the book too that you'll find is what I do is something called set the scene. And so in the book, there are five chapters with multiple themes within each chapter. So the idea is I want to make the everyday celebration feel effortless for you and something that is exciting. And the idea is that if you choose a theme first, which is what I call set the scene, then everything else can easily follow. 
And that's what makes the whole everyday celebrations just a little bit easier. The first one is weeknight meals, and then family, of course, friends, and sports and seasons. Those are all the things that we are celebrating and then there's themes within those chapters to give you more ideas. And so this one is in the friendship chapter. So this is my burrata and citrus salad italiano. The idea behind this salad, when I was in the creative process of the book, I came up with the idea for an at-home spa day as a way to get your friends together, do some pampering, and we never, at least, listen, I'm a mom, I rarely ever get the chance to be pampered, so it gives me an excuse to be with my friends. And when I was trying to think of a, a light sort of salad recipe that would be really lovely, I actually dug into an old cookbook that's my grandpa's. My grandpa was someone who really taught me the importance of cooking for your family, and really the importance of creating a home that is welcoming for your family, a place where everybody loves to go to and just have fun and smile and eat. And it's all centered around food. And really that's the heart of the book. It's about the marriage of food and crafts and how those two things can work together to elevate something that seems everyday and make it celebratory. As my grandpa got older, my parents asked him to write down his recipes because as most Italians will tell you, Italians never write down their recipes. <laughs> it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And so he did his best uh, to write these recipes and some of them are hilarious. A lot of it is handwriting. And anyways, in, the, in that book, he has a recipe for a Sicilian citrus salad because my family is Sicilian. And a lot of it is really just citrus. A lot of citrus, olive oil, salt, pepper. And so I wanted to elevate it a little bit so it could feel like it could fit in at a spa day. What I did, I actually added in some grapefruit, some oranges. If you can find blood oranges, I highly recommend it. The nice bitter and sort of sweetness that they have is just so lovely. And I love the color as well. You can see I already have some cut up over here and the colors in this are just so fantastic and beautiful. And as someone who's Sicilian, citrus just like runs in my veins. <laughs> Anything citrus, I am available for. And so, um, so making it this lovely spa salad is actually very easy and I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna start with the citrus and what you wanna do first is cut off the bottom, cut off the top, and take then the outside off. And here's the thing, when you have your citrus, they're gonna be all different sizes, right? So the grapefruit, the grapefruit is really big, and then you have your you know little oranges, some can be some can be small. You could add tangerines, you could honestly do any kind of citrus that you like in this. And truthfully, you could add any kind of fruit that you like. If you do like you know, strawberries or things like that, that would be great too. So you just wanna cut this white part off because that part is just a little bit chewy. All right, so you can see here, I will move this aside and then you can see our beautiful grapefruit right here. And then what I do is turn it on its side and then cut it into just thin pieces like this. So, Another tip too, before I cut in too much, what you can see here, what you could do before doing any cutting is to actually cut between those two white areas and then you could have those little wedges too. If you are someone who does not like any of the white part, then you could absolutely do that. Um, but I would say if you do that, make sure you do it over a bowl because you'll lose more juice and nobody wants that. You wanna be able to have all this beautiful juice. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yum! I love citrus season. Man, that was good. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yum, that was so much flavor in one bite. Okay, I'm gonna move this a little bit and we are going to assemble our citrus salad. So in order to make the salad perfect for a spa day, I really wanted to make it feel elevated and burrata cheese is one of my all-time favorites. I feel like anytime I make anything with burrata, it just feels fancy. Everyone who hasn't had burrata is like, what is that? Because it is just so lovely. So if you aren't familiar with burrata, the outside is mozzarella, 
and the inside is very similar in terms of flavor, but it's, it's cream and it's curd, so it will break open. I'm gonna put this on my platter. So I assemble it just right on the platter like this, and so I'm gonna do just some lovely little mounds of the cheese. I always sort of make like a little swirl with it, or not swirl, but uh, like an S. So I will go like this with the cheese, in the book, the recipe calls for two of these because it's to feed more people. I'm making this for my husband and kids today. The beauty of the book is I really did try to make recipes that were easy to make your own. And that's what's beautiful about this. If you, let's say, couldn't find burrata, you could use mozzarella or you could, and you could just like break that up too. Or you could use some goat cheese. It's time to just get creative. You know, and the, the, the idea with the book is I wanted to be able to encourage people to really be armed with the tools to be confident to have these, these moments and to make things extra special. And like, look at how easy this is. This would be perfect at just about any bridal shower, baby shower, I don't know. Tuesday night, <laughs> this would be so perfect for any summer celebration. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? And we're gonna make it even prettier. Look at these fantastic colors together. The citrus just pops from the white of the burrata. I love adding fresh herbs <sighs> onto just about anything. You'll see that in the book. Throughout the entire book, I add herbs to just about everything. And I'm telling you, there's nothing like fresh herbs. To be totally honest with you, I do not have a green thumb. I am terrible at growing anything from herbs to flowers, you name it. So that is why I am so happy that Melissa's Produce provided me with this beautiful fruit and these herbs. So I'm curious, do you guys, does anybody garden? Does anybody have a green thumb? I would love to hear. And also let me know where you're watching from. I am originally from the Midwest, so that is where a lot of my food inspiration comes from. And uh, an Italian background. So if we have any other Italians watching, let me know if you grew up eating a citrus salad kind of similar to this. My grandpa actually in the recipe has just like full wedges of lemon. So this isn't necessarily in the recipe, but we're gonna go rogue a little bit. And I'm gonna drizzle this with some lemon. And I did add just some basil too. I was talking, so <laughs> I forgot to mention. I added mint. The mint is just the perfect sort of summery herb. Since this recipe is in the spa day section of the book, I feel like mint and spas just go hand in hand. And I'm then adding basil because basil to me, I feel like it goes with so many things, but fruit is one of my favorite things to compare with basil. It is so good together. If you've never added basil to your fruit, I promise you it tastes delicious. And in the book, I have a fruit salad recipe. Talk about wanting to use up all your fresh fruit from the summer. There's a fruit salad recipe in here and I add basil to it and just some lime. Oh, it's so good. Now to really elevate this to make it feel like a spa day, like we haven't done it already, I'm actually adding some edible flowers. Edible flowers, I feel like it overlooked at the store because people are like, wait, what? That's a flower. They have a lovely floral <laughs> taste to them. The floral taste that edible flowers have is, you know what it reminds me of? It almost reminds me of honey. Because you know honey can be very floral. That's what uh, I think of when it comes to eating edible flowers. And you could leave these whole, you could break these up. I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. I'm gonna add in some uh, whole petals. I'm gonna add in a couple of the big flowers. Just for looks, I'm gonna add in these just because it really pops on here. Okay, so I'm gonna add in a couple other things that, that are optional, but I, I encourage you to try. I'm going to add in an onion. So today I have a shallot. In the book I say red onion. Those are two of my favorites to add in. And I have a, a, ma a mandolin right here. And so I'm gonna unlock it first. <laughs> unlock it. And what I do is, okay, I know it sounds weird to put 
any kind of onion on this. Shallots have a more mild flavor and red onions are gonna be a little bit more pungent. The kick that it gives, and plus it's just pretty, but it adds a really cool balance of flavor that is really unexpected. This is something that you would find at a high-end restaurant. I promise you it is worth a try. Plus I think it looks really pretty. Now, something that's very Italian, Italians love to add olive oil onto just about everything, but I like to add mine onto the fruit. Actually, even just olive oil on just citrus alone is beautiful. It has like this buttery richness, and so when you pair it with fruit, it is so lovely. And I'm going to add a sprinkle of salt. So the burrata is not salty. It's gonna be nice and just creamy, so that sprinkle of salt adds a nice balance. I like to use a finishing salt, something that has a little bit more of a, a thickness to the bite, because I like to have that crunch. And pepper. Now, I know it sounds weird to have pepper on fruit. However, <laughs> try it. This whole recipe is about encouraging you to try something that's a little bit different. Let me move this to the side so you can see. And look at how beautiful that is. So, and to serve these, so we have our, our citrus salad. You can see right here. We have our citrus salad and we have our pasta. Another quick tip about the pasta, if you have pasta, let's say sitting out, and it does start to thicken up, what you can do is actually take a little bit more of the pasta water, save that pasta water, and you can add a little bit more even just before serving, or let's say if you were having you know, a potluck, and, or let's say if you're having a barbecue and it's been sitting out a little long, what you can do is just add a little bit more of that pasta water, and that will loosen it up. And then, you have two absolutely beautiful recipes for the summer months. I love to serve this on just a flat platter. Instead of in a bowl where people are digging it out, this is what makes it really pretty. It looks like something you would find at a fancy restaurant. And then you have your pesto pasta, which has that nice, lemony bite to it, but it's very creamy and has that nice richness and nuttiness from the cheese. My family is gonna be so happy tonight. Now these are two recipes fit for an everyday celebration. It's all about taking something that you would have in the everyday and elevate it to make it feel celebratory. So these recipes and obviously so many more are in my book, Everyday Celebrations from scratch, you can go to fromscratchwithmaria.com for all the information. And I wrote this book truly to inspire people to be creative. I believe that creativity equals connection. And food and crafts are the ultimate connector. When those two things marry, it is not only a perfect celebration, but it's a perfect way to spend time with the people you love. It really is life's everyday moments that are the foundation for our memories and our happiness. Being around the dinner table with my family, eating this delicious food, those are some of my greatest, greatest memories and that's what I encourage you to do when you pick up a copy of this. I guarantee you will not go dry on ideas and the goal is that I've inspired you to spend time with the people you love and to cultivate a community around you. I hope these recipes have inspired you to get in the kitchen and to try something just a little bit new and different and if you make these recipes or any of the other recipes from the book, I would love to see them. You can tag me at From Scratch with Maria on all social media. And again, one last big thank you to Melissa's Produce for having me today and letting me share these recipes and my book with you. This book truly means so much to me. Thank you so much for watching. And now I just need a plate so I can dig in. <laughs> Thanks again. Bye.